Donald Trump isn't exactly known for thinking in foreign policy details. My foreign policy will always put the interests of the American people and American security above all this. But recently, Trump got specific about something important, NATO, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. And what he said shocked everyone. NATO is a military alliance between the US, Canada, and a large chunk of Europe. It began in 1949 as a means of deterring a Soviet attack on Western Europe. In Washington, the United States breaks a 170-year-old tradition as it joins 11 nations in the signing of the Atlantic Defense Treaty. Basically saying, if you attack one of us, you'll get a response from all of us. NATO has grown since to include 28 countries, including former members of the Soviet Union. It intervened to end the Bosnian War in 1995 and responded to the 9-11 attacks with a decade-long mission in Afghanistan. The alliance has helped keep the peace in the Northern Hemisphere for more than half a century. And now, Donald Trump is threatening to destroy the whole thing. So Trump was in an interview with the New York Times on July 20th. Sanger asked him, can the members of NATO, including the new members in the Baltics, count on the United States to come to their military aid if they were attacked by Russia? Trump replies, have they fulfilled their obligation to us? If they fulfill their obligations to us, the answer is yes. And if not, and then Trump says, I'm not saying if not. Trump is probably referring to the fact that all NATO countries have agreed to spend 2% of their GDP on national defense as part of the treaty. The US is just one of five countries that met that benchmark in 2016. And Trump isn't the first to call out countries that haven't. The majority of allies are still not hitting that 2% mark. Everybody's got to step up and everybody's got to do better. But Trump is the first and only one to suggest that our commitment to NATO should be contingent on those spending levels. And even his fellow Republicans are calling him out. Now I have friends that you know serve in parliament in places like Estonia that uh, every day worry about the Russians deciding that this is the time to re-annex and to take them back. And comments like this are not only ill-informed, they're dangerous. I mean, it's the most successful military alliance in the history of the world. Uh, I want to reassure our NATO allies that would any, should any of them be attacked, we'll be there to defend them. And um, I'm willing to kind of chalk it up to a rookie mistake. But Trump isn't backing down. If Mitch McConnell says that, then he's wrong. So all I'm saying is they have to pay. So why is this such a big deal? It's because of the way that NATO works. You see, NATO deters attacks through something called credible commitment. There's no organization that can force the United States to go fight for Estonia or Latvia or Lithuania. A country like Russia has to believe that the United States is willing to intervene even if it risks World War III. That's why political leaders of both parties haven't wavered from the commitment to defend the NATO alliance until now. And he used the NATO alliance almost as a transactional business alliance. So that is a complete break with American policy. And Trump's comments come at a time where NATO is particularly relevant. Russia invaded Ukraine in 2014, even annexing part of the country. This came just about six years after its invasion of Georgia. That's why the New York Times asked him specifically about the Baltic states, Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania. Russia is getting increasingly aggressive on its borders. And if it seems like the United States is wavering, Putin might be more tempted to attack one of the Baltic states as part of a plot to destroy NATO. And the Republican presidential candidate has just invited him to try. 